Welcome to Power Electronics Education Electronic Book Lecture 1 Introduction This lecture is presented by Dr. Firuzare The contents of this lecture are What is Power Electronics? Power Converters Power Switches Power Modules and Applications of Power Electronics what is power electronics? Power electronics is power processing. It's an application of electronic circuits to control a power converter in order to change the input voltage or current magnitude and or frequency suitable for different loads. In a power electronic system, the flow of electric energy is controlled based on a load demand. The main aims in modern power electronic systems are to deliver the power with maximum efficiency, minimum cost and weight in an integrated circuit. Power electronics has a significant role in, in different industries when power processing is required such as in computers, telecommunications, motor drives, cars and alternative energy systems. So this is a simple block diagram of a power electronic system. Basically, power electronics can be split into a power and a controller or electronic circuit. The power circuit converts the input power and delivers it to the output. The electronic circuit or controller controls the converter by measuring the input and output voltage or current and compare with the reference in order to generate the signals for the power circuit. So that means the controller compares the output voltage or current compared with the reference and then generate the signals at low voltage, low power. And then we can turn on and turn off the power switches in the converter to chop the high voltage or high current in order to generate the same signal same voltage or current waveform in very high voltage high power system that means the power processing means a mapping from low voltage into high voltage that means using signal processing we can synthesize any voltage or current waveform and then we can generate the same signal in high voltage high current. In general circuit elements in most electrical systems are resistors, capacitors, magnetic elements, it can be either inductor or transformers, and transistors operate in switch mode or linear mode. So, some of these components may be used in low or high power systems. In most electronic circuits, in which efficiency is not the main concern, so circuit elements consist of resistors, capacitors, transistors operate in switch mode or linear mode, but normally we don't like to have magnetic elements like inductors or transformers because is they are large in size and difficult to be integrated so that's why the transistor may operate in linear or switch mode and the reason is that the um, electronic circuit operates at low voltage low power in power converters efficiency is the main concern that means power circuits consist of capacitors, magnetic elements like inductors or transformers, and transistors operate in switch mode. So in this case we don't like to have any lossy components like resistors or linear mode device because we are talking about high power, high current, and these lossy components increase the losses, decrease the efficiency and cause the thermal problems. 
A power electronic system may process input power and deliver it to a load based on these following converters. So when we are talking about input source, it can be either AC or DC. And when we can ch say that we can change the power into AC or DC, so that means we have either DC or AC at the output. So that brings four different combinations. The first one is DC-DC converter. For different applications, we can control output magnitude. For example, if the input voltage is pretty low coming from a battery, we can boost the voltage. We can provide more voltage for different applications. Or if the input voltage is pretty high because coming from, for example, a rectifier, and if we need low voltage for electronic system, we can reduce the voltage magnitude. The next type is AC-DC converter. So in this case, we convert the AC into DC. This is basically a diode rectifier. That means if we have AC voltage using diode rectifier, we can get DC with the filter basically we get this type of voltage so that means changing from AC to DC there are different applications because we can get DC voltage here unregulated and using this converter DC-DC that I described at the beginning we can get different DC voltage at different level the next type is DC-AC converter which is basically an inverter that means if you have a DC voltage coming from battery or any rectifier then we can change the AC in this case we can change the output frequency and magnitude or we can create different AC signal with different frequency and different magnitude so how we can get the DC the DC voltage can come from battery or can comes from this type of regulator that I described previously so this type of converter ha is not very common in industry but normally we can use it for some special um, AC drive system for some industrial applications or in very high power we can use cycle converters or matches converters for some drive applications different applications have different load requirements which need special consideration in topology and control circuits for example in a DC power supply if we have to generate DC voltage so normally we need to get regulated voltage at 5 volts or 12 volts depends on application so that means the output voltage is almost constant or in another application for example in a DC motor drive the output voltage should be adjustable because for variable speed we need to change the DC voltage so the output voltage should be adjustable because otherwise we cannot control the speed in an AC power system when the output voltage should be AC that means we should be able to control the frequency and magnitude so in this case depends on an application if if it's an uh, AC power system application normally the frequency is constant so we need to control the magnitude or in an AC motor drive we should be able to control the frequency and magnitude in order to control the speed the controller is an important part of the system to control and regulate output voltage and current and also to protect the system in a hard situation such as over current, over voltage and or over temperature so what's happened the controller can measure output current or output voltage and then it can also compare that one with the reference signal the reference signal can be also current or voltage and then based on this one it can generate the um, control signal it can generate pulse pattern suitable for this converter which can turn on and turn off the power switches to provide desired output voltage when we design a power converter 
it's quite important to understand the converted modes of operation that means we have to know the output current and voltage for example if you look at this power converter in some applications we need to have positive voltage or negative voltage and sometimes the output current should be either positive or negative so in this case the system can operate either in this mode that means output current is positive output voltage is positive or in this mode whereas the output current is positive output voltage is negative or in this mode when the output voltage and current both are negative or in this mode output voltage is positive output current is negative so basically the converted topology will be different when it operates in one two or four quadrants that means the power switches in this power converter should be determined based on this power flow this is an unidirectional power flow in which the power is controlled and processed from the input from the input side and transferred to the output so what's happened because the system operates in two modes this quadrant and this quadrant that means the output voltage should be positive while the output current is positive so that means the output voltage is positive and in this case the current should be positive or if the output voltage is negative the output current should be negative that means in this case the output current is in this direction and the voltage is also negative so when we know these modes of operation then we can design the power converter to be able to deliver positive negative current and provide positive negative voltage so this is a bi-directional power flow in which the power can be controlled and processed from the input side and transferred to the output side or vice versa that means sometimes from output side into the input side so in this case as you can see the system operates in four quadrants in these four quadrants that means the output voltage can be either positive while the current can be positive or negative or the output voltage can be negative while the output current can be either positive or negative so the key point is that the power converter should be able to actually transfer this power from input to output or from output to input so in a power electronic system line and EMI filters are important sections of the system as well that means we need to have a filter on the input side and also on the output side depends on some applications sometimes we don't need to have filter especially in AC motor drive but for some applications especially for power system application or in UPS uninterruptible power supply we need to have output filter but input filter is also important because we should be able to control the low frequency and high frequency noise in modern power converters due to advances in semiconductor switches converters can be classified according to low and high frequency switching devices so the first type is low or line frequency converters because sometimes we actually switch at line frequency which can be either 50 or 60 Hertz normally these type of converters are um, control or uncontrolled rectifiers the next one is high frequency converters based on hard or soft switching in which Controllable switches like MOSFET IGBT in the converters are almost turned on and off at frequency higher than the line frequency. So let's start with uncontrolled line frequency converter based on power diodes. This is a single phase. We can change the AC voltage into DC. 
we can rectify the voltage if we have a capacitor across the output we can get better voltage similar like this but still this voltage is not regulated we need to have another converter to actually control the output voltage this type if you can see the switching happens at line frequency so that's why if the frequency of the grid is 50 or 60 Hertz so basically the switching happens at this frequency but when we have three phase system with 120 degree phase shift between the phases so almost we can get regulated voltage but depends on the topology if we have half a control or full control basically we can get a better voltage waveform compared to single phase but again the switching actually happens at line frequency this is control line frequency converter based on tardistors or SCR that means again we can change the AC voltage into DC voltage but the point is that we can actually change the firing angle that means we can actually decide when to switch the tarister and that's why we can control the output voltage compared to diode rectifier but still I have to say that the system actually operate at low frequency that means if the if the grid voltage is at 50 or 60 Hertz again the switching happens at this frequency or in a three phase system again we do the same we can actually control the output voltage by changing the firing angle high frequency converters are either voltage or current source converters high frequency converters are mostly used in DC 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 AC and AC AC converters in which fast switching based on a pulse with modulated signal is required so let's start with voltage source converter when we are talking about voltage source converter that means the input source is a voltage type so basically using a capacitor we can store energy and this capacitor can provide voltage source for this converter and normally for voltage source converter we have inductive and resistive load in this case we actually chop the DC voltage and based on a pulse pattern we generate this voltage at high voltage this type of voltage waveform at high voltage high current the output of the converter suitable for high power system and when we are talking about current source converter that means the source is a current source the input source is a current source and normally we can have a large inductor and if the current through the inductor is continuous then we can consider it as a current source so that means this inverter look at the source as a current source and then by turning on and turning off the switches here in the converter we can chop the input current and then provide pulse pattern at the output of the converter suitable for basically resistive and capacitive loads in some complex power processing systems the instantaneous input power is not equal to the instantaneous output power the reason is that we need to have different conversions in order to achieve robustness and to design a reliable power converter so that means if we look at the input power so at any time input power is not equal to output power but the average should be if there is a loss of system so let's look at the switching converter in this topology so basically as an example if an input source is the grid voltage and a demand is to deliver an adjustable DC voltage to a load so we need to convert the AC voltage into DC type through a first converter so that means the first converter should be AC DC converter and the reason is that the input voltage is grid voltage so what we get here we get DC voltage if we have a capacitor here 
basically the voltage across the capacitor is almost like this voltage waveform but that voltage is not suitable for different applications so now we need to have another converter so that means here we have a DC voltage so this source is a DC source for this converter so we need to have another converter which is DC to DC and what's happened here by controlling this converter we can adjust output voltage so in this case we have two converters the first one is AC DC converter and the second one is DC DC converter and these converters are connected through this capacitor and this capacitor is a filter for this converter and is the voltage source for this converter another example is a two-stage conversion process where the first one is a diode rectifier so the first converter is a diode rectifier that means if the input voltage is grid voltage so we have AC to DC converter and that means the input voltage magnitude and frequency are constant because this is grid voltage and what we get across the capacitor is unregulated DC voltage and now for some application like motor drive we need to control the output frequency and we know when we need to control the output magnitude so using this converter which is basically DC to AC converter we have DC voltage the voltage across the capacitor comes from this converter so here we have unregulated voltage but using this converter and based on pulse width modulation technique we can control the output voltage and frequency and provide variable frequency variable voltage for different applications like motor drive Welcome to Power Electronics Education Electronic Book Lecture 1 Introduction This lecture is presented by Dr. Firuzare So finally we can look at the uh, block diagram Here we can see that the power electronic system consists of power converter which actually processes the power and this converter is controlled by this controller so the component, the circuit elements within the power converter consist of capacitors magnetic elements like inductors or transformers and transistors operate in switch mode so basically we don't have lossy components like resistors or linear mode transistors and in the control circuit because the efficiency is not a big issue we have these elements like resistors capacitors and transistors operate in switch mode or linear mode and here basically the output filter depends on the application but normally this one consists of inductor and capacitor and this filter is quite important is line filter and EMI filter in general a power electronic system consists of an input source it can be either current or voltage source and also it can be either DC type or AC and also we have a load it can be in most of application we have resistive inductive load and also semiconductor devices in the power converters so that means if we have power converter inside the power converter we have power switches either control switches diodes or SCR or tyristor and then we have a controller basically consists of analog or digital circuits especially microcontrollers that means by measuring the output voltage and output current and compare with reference signal it can be current or voltage 
the controller provides the gate signal in order to control the output voltage or current and sometimes this signal is not suitable to turn off or turn on the power switches so that's why we need to have a gate drive system so gate drive circuit is also important in some applications to be able to turn on and turn off the power switches and for protection sometimes we need to have a circuit breaker that means a static switch to be able to turn off the whole system if there is any short circuit if there is any fault and also uh, for protection we need to have different sensors to measure the over current over voltage over temperature and also for quality purpose we need to have filter either line filter input filter or output filter if there is a AC drive system or if there is a motor drive normally we don't need to have a filter output filter in a power converter key elements are power switches the most important power switches in modern power converters are power diodes power MOSFET and IGBT there are some other power switches which were very common in the past such as BGT power BGT this type of switch has significant switching loss and also some constraint on gate drive so this one is not very common and the next one is silicon control rectifier SCR or thyristor this type of switch has an important role in high power high voltage converters because they can stand at high voltage and they can deliver high current they are also used in low power AC AC converters in which a simple and a cheap converter is required there are two other switches such as GTO and MCT they have special application in high voltage high power especially in power system which is suitable for renewable energy applications reactive power control and active power filters when we consider power switch as an ideal switch that means the switch can handle unlimited current and blocks unlimited voltage so there is no limit on this voltage level or on this current level and the voltage drop across the switch that means when the switch is getting on the voltage across the switch is almost zero and the current through the switch is also the leakage current through the switch is almost zero that means when the switch is off the leakage current is also zero so the switch is turned on and off with no rise and fall times so just when we apply gate signal and when we remove the gate signal the switch is turned on and turned on in a very short time so that means the switching time either when the switch is getting on or off or zero so this assumption help us to analyze a power circuit but for design and practical considerations we should consider real power switches so in a real case ideal switches do not exist during switching transients when the switch is off now we apply gate signal at this time and then the switch is getting on so during this time the switch is in on position but this is switching transient so you can see that over this time the voltage across the switch is decreasing while the current through the switch is increasing and because power is voltage times of current so we can multiply voltage and current and get the instantaneous power and here you can see that the switching loss is significant and that's because the voltage across the switch is changing at the same time the current through the switch is changing so we have to know that this issue may create so many problems this is voltage change DVDT if there is any stray capacitance in the system that creates significant leakage current and this is current change that means the IDT and if there is any stray inductance 
that creates significant over voltage. Three major issues to design a power electronic system are losses, harmonics, and electromagnetic interference or EMI. These issues affect system cost, size, efficiency and quality. So it's a trade-off between these factors. So when you're talking about losses, basically losses means switching losses, conduction losses, and also some other losses associated with the uh, controller and some other losses associated with energy stored in stray components for example if there is any stray inductance or stray capacitance whenever we switch on and off we charge and discharge that means we dissipate power also when we are talking about harmonics that means the quality of output voltage or current is important for example the output ripple total harmonic distortion and harmonic contents and when we are talking about EMI that means high frequency contents of noise which basically generated by DVDT and the IDT and this happens if we have a fast switching that means delta T is decreasing or this term is increasing same happens for DVDT so if there is any significant uh, stray capacitance or uh, stray inductance that means the IDT times of uh, stray inductance creates significant voltage and DVDT times of stray capacitance generates significant current so when we design a power electronic system we have to know we have to understand these factors and we have to optimize the system based on these three factors so integrated power electronic modules means integrating all the um, um, sections like power section filter gate drive controller and sensors in a package called integrated power electronic modules so it's very challenging because when we're talking about power converters we are talking about high voltage high current and when we have a gate drive and controller close to the power converter noise is a big issue and also sensor and filter should be integrated to actually increase the power density so let's start with sensor so when you are talking about sensor it can be over current sensor over voltage and over temperature and plus a snowball circuit to protect the power switches when we are talking about controller that means um, logic device normally we have microcontroller and A to D or D to A to sample the output voltage or current and also process and also we, we may have analog circuits like op amp or other comparators and then the controller basically send the proper signal at low voltage and this voltage level may not be suitable to turn on the power switches so what we need we need to have a gate drive circuits and we normally have high side gate drive or low side gate drive and also in some applications we need to have that time control to protect the system against any short circuit and filter it can be line filter EMI filter basically consists of capacitors and inductors either common mode or differential mode and for surge protection we have varistor here variable resistor and main part is power which consists of diodes or control switches with different capacitors and inductor based on different topologies so one of the demands is to actually have integrated power electronic modules and also we like to actually reduce any wiring and we like to integrate everything increase the power density 
So one of the issue to reduce the size of filters is increasing the switching frequency. So when we increase the switching frequency, one of the drawback is switching losses. Switching losses increase the temperature. We need to actually transfer the heat from junction to ambient. So packaging is one of the issue that we have to consider. To reduce electromagnetic interference, we need to have planar phosphor because compared to normal wire planar phosphor, this type of interconnection has less strain inductance, which can reduce over voltage and protect the system. And in power electronics, as you can see, everything is integrated. So we can, instead of discrete component, we can have a package which includes all the power converters with minimum wiring. And when we need to connect the control section to the power section, instead of wiring, we can use uh, direct connection. And in some applications, when we need to connect some passive components like inductor or capacitor, we can connect through this planar bus bar. We can put the switches, connect through this bus bar, or we can put the capacitor. And in this case, we can reduce any stray inductance or capacitance. So power electronics has an important role in modern technology. Almost in all electrical systems, there is at least one power converter from mobile phone chargers and computer power supplies to industrial motor drives from low power to high power so with advances in semiconductor devices which provide fast switching devices and also microcontrollers with high frequency that means power electronics becomes a main solution in renewable energy systems such as photovoltaic and wind turbines to export green power into power system with high efficiency and in some industrial applications where we need to synthesize high frequency signal then using fast switching fast sampling high speed microcontroller we can generate the desired voltage or current so it's hard to define power levels for power electronic systems Different topologies may be used at different power ratings. In general, we can classify them into less than 100 watts. Basically, these type of converters are switch mode power supplies for portable equipment and a small motor drive system used in home appliances. Less than 10 kilowatt, which basically in power supplies for computers or office equipment and variable speed motor drives used in commercial buildings for example in um, air conditioning systems between 10 kilowatts to 1 megawatts in high power motor drives in industry traction control and renewable energy system and more than 1 megawatt in utility transmission line, grid connected system and reactive power control. Different combinations of power converters are used in several applications. The converters are classified based on input source and load requirements. I have to highlight a key point that normally AC AC converters are not very common in industry. The most important power converters are AC-DC basically based on diode rectifier then we can get DC voltage and then DC-DC which can convert the DC at different voltage level either constant or adjustable or DC-AC especially cascade with AC-DC then we can control the output frequency and magnitude. So these three converters, AC-DC, DC-DC and DC-AC are very common and very important in power electronics. Most power converters have multi-power processors in which the input voltage, which is almost grid voltage, with constant frequency and magnitude 
is converted to the DC through this AC-DC converter and then through this DC-DC converter we can get regulated voltage or adjustable DC voltage at this bus bar or through this DC-AC converter we can get adjustable AC voltage with controlling the magnitude and frequency and sometimes we get the uh, DC source from photovoltaic or battery and in this case we need to actually boost the voltage through this DC-DC converter because the point is that this voltage level probably is not suitable for different applications and then we can actually have we can provide either adjustable DC or AC voltage for power supply, AC or DC motor drives and power systems. So this is power flow based on input source in different applications. So starting with AC input, so it comes from grid voltage or from generators, either variable or constant frequency or magnitude. So the first application is for high power um, system used as a power supply or basically in motor drive as a DC drive system so in this case there is only single converter which is basically based on control rectifier that means in this case we have only one AC DC converter based on thyristor or SCR which is controlled rectifier and on the input side we have AC and what we get we get DC across the output and the voltage is controlled by firing angle by changing the switching time and in this case you can see that we can normally use this type of converter for high power power supply and high power DC motor drive now let's look at another topology so in this case we have diode rectifier and what we get if the input is AC so we have one rectifier which can convert the AC into DC so basically this is based on diode uncontrolled rectifier where we can get DC from AC and here normally we have a rectifier with the uh, filter suppose we have a capacitor so what we get from here we have unregulated DC voltage with ripple and this voltage is not control is not adjustable so it depends on the application if we need the DC for example power supply so through this DC DC converter we can control the DC voltage so one application is to get DC DC voltage to get DC voltage through this DC DC converter and then we can control the output voltage it can be used as a power supply or DC drive system or we can basically control the output voltage or generate AC voltage through this converter that means here we have DC voltage and what's happened here we can control the output voltage so in this case we can have another converter which is DC AC and across the output we can get AC voltage with adjustable frequency and magnitude suitable for AC drive system or in power system where we can export the power from generator into the system or for power system stability Welcome to Power Electronics Education 
electronic book lecture one introduction this lecture is presented by Dr. Firuzare in this case suppose that the DC source is either battery or photovoltaic and basically this voltage is not high in some applications we need higher than uh, battery or photovoltaic voltage so through this DC DC converter we can increase the voltage up to level suitable for different applications so here we get adjustable uh, DC voltage and if we need to use that one as a power supply so directly we can actually use that one and here we can send it to this system so we can use it as a power supply because this voltage is adjustable regulated then we can send it through this system to actually use it for DC drive system or if we need to change the voltage from DC to AC so in this case we need AC voltage for different applications probably variable frequency variable magnitude so through this converter we can control the output voltage and frequency suitable for AC drives or power systems in different applications for reactive power control or for active power control so we can say that if the input is DC unregulated so through this converter which is DC DC we get DC voltage normally we have a capacitor large enough to provide regulated voltage and then if we need to have that voltage as a power supply we can actually use it in these applications or if we need for AC power system in this case we can connect the system through another converter which is called as a DC AC and then across the output we get AC voltage at different frequency and different magnitude now let's concentrate on different applications and see how we can provide for example DC supply how we can provide adjustable constant DC voltage to have a power supply suitable for different applications like battery charger for portable devices or high or medium power supply or charger for electric vehicles personal computers and other commercial systems so the point is that the output should be DC either adjustable or regulated so depends on the input side input source if the input is AC so definitely we need to have an AC DC converter for high power converter this one for high power converter this converter should be based on thyristor that means regulated and this is the power flow directly from AC DC that means we have only single converter or if we have to provide a DC voltage for low power applications so normally here we have diode rectifier so what we get here we get DC voltage and through this line we can control the DC voltage and at this point we can get regulated voltage and that regulated voltage can be used for power supply or if the input source is DC so we can actually control the output voltage through this converter and then finally we can use that voltage for power supply now let's concentrate on different applications for example DC or AC variable speed drives in robotics or industry so it can be low or medium power drives in home appliances like air conditioners, pumps or 
high power drives in tractions, electric vehicles, conveyors, lifts and so on. For DC motor drive, if we have a DC source, if it's high power, then again we need to have a thyristor. And by changing the firing angle, this topology is enough to actually provide voltage to control this speed. So in DC drive, we can only use this converter. If we have low power DC drive system and we need high accuracy with better quality, if the input source is AC, first of all through this converter which is basically based on diode rectifier, we get DC voltage and this DC voltage is not regulated through this converter we get adjustable voltage and that voltage is enough for DC drive system and if we have DC voltage source and again we should actually provide enough voltage for DC drive system then we can change the voltage level we can regulate the voltage at this point and then send it directly to the DC drive system so this is the power flow for these applications and now we can concentrate on the AC drive system so for AC drive system we can basically look at the input side if the input is AC then through this diode rectifier here what we get we get DC voltage and here we have a DC voltage through this DC AC converter we can control the frequency and magnitude suitable for AC drive system so this is basically the power flow for this application or if the voltage source is DC and still we have to provide variable frequency and variable magnitude for AC drive system so what we can get we can control the voltage at this point through this DC DC converter and then through the second converter we can provide variable frequency and variable voltage for AC drive system so in last application, power system applications, especially for renewable energy system, distributed generations, flexible AC transmission, power quality, uninterruptible power supply, and active and reactive power control, we can provide AC voltage suitable for these applications. Again, we can concentrate on the input source. If it's AC, then basically through this AC-DC converter, we can get DC voltage here and through this AC DC converter we can change the output frequency and magnitude for different applications if the point is that we have DC voltage for example from photovoltaic in the distributed generations or for roller area or for uninterruptible power supply then we can change the DC voltage especially voltage level through this converter so here we can boost the voltage and then at this point we have enough voltage across this output and then we can change the frequency and voltage through this converter for this application power system application that means variable frequency variable voltage now let's look at different applications in details for example comparing the traditional power supply which is basically based on low frequency transformer and compare with switch mode power supply so what's happened we have a line voltage grid voltage at 50 or 60 Hertz and especially at 240 or 220 and then using this transformer if it's a step down we can decrease the voltage for example from 240 to 24 or less depends on the application and using this 
door directive wire we can and through this based on this capacitor we can get unregulated voltage and that voltage is approximately around that voltage level and suppose that we need to have 15 volts so what's happened using this transistor which operates in linear mode then we can get regulated voltage across the output when we compare the output voltage with the reference and then the controller can change the base current in order to control the output voltage so that means this transistor actually acts as a variable resistor in order to provide enough voltage but the point is that there is a significant loss due to uh, operating in linear mode and normally this type of converter is not suitable for high power but now let's look at this type of converter in this case we don't have any transformer here we have filter we don't have any low frequency transformer that means here we get high voltage unregulated similar to this section but that voltage is high the peak value is around line voltage and then here what we get using switch mode device by turn on and turn off and using through this filter low pass filter we can regulate the output voltage that means the output voltage is controlled through this controller the controller basically measure that one compared with reference and then try to change the pulse width by changing the pulse width the switching time is changed and then we can control the output voltage and this filter can get rid of the harmonics so basically at this point the peak of that one is approximately um, 300 volts while here is approximately 30 volts the difference is that this one operates at low frequency so that means it requires large inductor and capacitor but this one operates at high switching frequency better quality better efficiency suitable for high power applications this is another example for switch mode power supply with multi outputs the advantage is that we can get multi outputs through this transformer and the point is that the size of this transformer is smaller than conventional system because in this case this transformer operate at high switching frequency at high switching frequency this transformer doesn't operate at line frequency and the point is that we can provide the galvanic isolation plus multi output and also better efficiency this is another example to control the flow of water for example in a pump we need to actually change the valve position in which the actually electric machine actually operate at constant speed so in this case we have losses across this valve but another way is that we can use adjustable motor drive that means by providing variable frequency and variable voltage we can control the speed at this point we don't need to have any valve here and the speed is changed based on this controller by providing variable frequency and variable voltage and then we can easily control the flow of water let's look at the circuit diagram of a motor drive system basically this part is diode rectifier which consists of AC to DC converter in a three phase system so what we get here we get unregulated DC voltage the voltage across the capacitor is similar to this voltage waveform and then by turn on and turn off these switches either in this phase or in these phases 
we can provide AC voltage by changing the pulse pattern, by changing the pulse width in different phases, by changing the switching frequency, by changing the modulation index, we can basically control the output voltage. So that's why what we get here after the filter or with or without the filter, we can provide AC voltage at different frequency or and different magnitude suitable for AC machine to control the speed and if I have output filter definitely the voltage across the output much better less ripple and what's happened here the controller can measure the output current and other variables compared with the reference so measure that one compare with reference reference can be voltage current or any other parameters and then the controller can provide proper signal at low voltage and if this voltage is not suitable to turn on the switches then this is a gate drive which can provide enough voltage or enough power to be able to turn on the power switch in high power AC DC converters the input voltage is supplied from a power grid through a diode rectifier that means this is the diode rectifier and we have capacitor across the output to regulate the output voltage so basically this type of converter at high power injects significant harmonic into the system that means this is the input current which is not a sine wave and this current has significant harmonics so we have to comply the IEC standard so in this case we have two options either using passive or active filter so passive filter is very bulky and expensive and also increase the size of the system the other option is using power factor correction so basically using high frequency converter which operates in the DC-DC converter mode and using this system we measure the line current and try to shape it to a sine wave in phase with the voltage so in this case we can improve the power factor and also we can control the harmonics in power system sometimes we have to control reactive power in order to stabilize power system so we can use thyristors in such a case to control the current so basically if we have input voltage which is AC if we turn on the thyristors at different times that means we can control the reactive power and also when we have capacitors here with two thyristors connected to each other based on this configuration we can also turn on and turn off so in this case we can control the RMS but the point is that we can control the reactive power in power system sometimes we need shunt or series compensators for example in this case if we have a nonlinear load connected to this power system and if the current through the load is sine wave plus harmonics so the point is that without this shunt compensator the power system should deliver this current but in order to improve the power quality we can connect a shunt compensator close to this load and this compensator can deliver this harmonics into the load and the power system can deliver a pure sine wave that means this current plus current from the compensator equals to load current and in this case this compensator operates like an active power filter and in some applications because this voltage may fluctuate so we may have different voltage levels so in order to stabilize that voltage 
we can compensate that voltage using series compensator that means this voltage equals to line voltage plus that voltage so by measuring the output voltage and input voltage this converter which is DC AC provides different voltage and then here using this series compensator we can get regulated voltage in renewable systems for example when we have a PV system so because of variable voltage and also because we get DC voltage we need to export the power into the power system that means we have to generate AC voltage with constant frequency and also voltage so we need to have DC AC converter and in some applications if this DC voltage is not high enough we may have another converter cascade with this one that means using DC DC converter first we can boost the voltage and also we can regulate the voltage and then we can connect that one to the DC AC converter so then we can export the power into the grid now let's look at wind turbines which generate variable voltage in magnitude and frequency so because of variable speed here what we get we basically get variable voltage and variable frequency so this voltage and this frequency is not suitable for grid so what we need we need to change the frequency and voltage into a constant voltage and frequency because of the grid or in some application we may con control the voltage and keep the frequency constant in order to be able to transfer the power so in this case what's happened we have AC here and we should be able to generate AC here as well so basically in some applications we should be able to control the active and reactive power in both directions so one of the solution is that we can basically control the system using AC DC converter so what we get we get DC voltage so it doesn't matter the input voltage is the input frequency and magnitude is valuable what we get we get DC voltage depends on the output depends on the output of this generator and then we can have capacitor here to regulate the voltage and then we can basically have another converter which is DC to AC and then by controlling the frequency and voltage we can export the power and in some case we can call it back to back that means we can either the system can operate in four quadrants that means power flow can be bi-directional so let's classify power electronics in, into different categories but the point is that fundamental of power electronics means that an engineer should have enough knowledge of circuit theory electronics power components digital system like microcontroller to have enough knowledge of electromagnetic interference and compatibility and also familiar with simulation tools and knowledge of hardware and then for advanced applications for example working on power supply switch mode power supply and UPS an engineer should have enough knowledge of control and advanced control or working on motor drive an engineer should have enough knowledge of electric machine and control renewable energy and distributed generations an engineer should have enough knowledge of power system and control and to work on advanced pulse width modulation techniques 
an engineer should have enough knowledge of signal processing. Welcome to Power Electronics Education Electronic Book Tutorial 1 Introduction This tutorial is presented by Dr. Firuzare. So in this case let's start with the power supply and the load. We have a PV system here which basically generate DC voltage and the point is that this DC voltage fluctuates because this voltage is not regulated at the sunlight is changed over the day so this is our PV the second supply is wind generator suppose that we have a generator and is connected to to windmill wind turbine and this generator generate AC voltage and frequency and voltage fluctuate the reason is that speed of wind is not constant and the last power supply is battery and we need this battery as a backup in a case that we have no wind or no sunlight then we need to actually provide power for some of the loads so this one actually gives DC voltage so if you look at the load in an isolated area so basically we may have different types of loads such as home appliances, TVs and so on or in commercial we may have different types of loads for example air conditions or pumps so we call that one load 1 load 2 and load 3 so it can be for example AC we need to have AC line at 240 and 50 Hertz so the point is that then we can provide energy and power for these types of loads so the case is that how to transfer and extract power from these sources into the power system so the case is that we have different types of power converters for example we have AC to DC we have DC to AC and we have also DC to DC so think about it for 5-10 minutes and try to connect one of these power converters between the source and load and try to find the uh, power electronic system for this configuration so let's concentrate on the AC side suppose this is the load which consists of load 1, 2, 3 we need to generate AC voltage at 240 and 50 Hertz that means this voltage is AC so basically we can have one power converter based on DC to AC converter and the voltage can be at that voltage level and at that frequency but the point is that because the output voltage is based on pulse pattern so in real time we have PWM 
output voltage. So this type of voltage in real time is not suitable for different applications. So that's why in this case we need to have a filter. So in this case we need to have a filter and the output voltage can be sine wave with little bit harmonics and the harmonic level depends on this type of filter. So in this case we have DC voltage coming from other sources for example PV, wind turbine and battery and in this case we need to generate the regulated DC voltage for example at 400 volts suitable for this main DC AC converter. Now let's concentrate on input side. The first power supply is a PV system so we know that the voltage, output voltage from this PV is DC and this DC voltage fluctuates so we need to regulate that one so in this case we need basically one DC to DC converter so what we get here we can also boost the voltage and regulate the output voltage so the output voltage here is regulated and for example we can get 400 volts here suitable for the main DC to AC converter. So the second type of power supply is a wind turbine. So we know that the output voltage here fluctuates because of wind speed so one possibility is that we can use for example AC to DC converter that means if the frequency and voltage fluctuates here we get DC voltage and this DC voltage is not the voltage across this output is not regulated so another possibility is we can use for example DC to DC converter again that means we can regulate this voltage and here we can get same voltage as this voltage level that means we can design this converter in such a case to get 400 volts and the last power supply which is basically we can use it as a backup is a battery so if the battery's voltage is is lower than 400 volts so we can use another DC DC converter here to convert the low voltage into high voltage so here we can regulate the voltage and get 400 volts we can connect these outputs to this common DC bus and this common DC bus is 400 volts. Now let's look at the power flow. For a DC system, for example for this PV system, so we need to actually extract the power and transfer it to the DC side so this case is unidirectional but in wind turbine if we use AC DC converter the point is that if we use based on diode rectifier so in this case is unidirectional but for example in different applications for example if we have induction generator we need to deliver reactive power to the wind turbine otherwise we are not able to generate voltage at the output of this generator so in this case it's not possible to use 
ACDC based on DART rectifier, but we need to have active AC to DC converter, which is basically one type of DC AC converter. That means if we design AC DC and look at the input from this side. So here you can see that this converter is DC to AC for this terminal and basically in this case if we have an inductor and if we control this current and if we control the magnitude of current here that means we can control the power so with respect to this terminal at any phase angle so it's possible to control the active and reactive power so in this case even instead of this AC-DC based on diode rectifier for or DC-DC we can use active AC to DC converter battery in this case we use this power as a backup we have to transfer the power into the DC line but the point is that when we have significant power coming from PV and wind turbine then we should be able to charge the battery so that's why in this case it's quite important to design a power converter here DC-DC which should be bidirectional that means charging this is the power flow discharging this is the power flow so finally this is the power system that means for these three different types of loads load 1, 2 and 3 these are connected to this AC system which is basically 240 volts and 50 Hertz through this filter output filter and this filter is basically connected to a high power DC to AC and the voltage at this terminal is for example 400 volts and if you look at the PV system this PV is connected to a DC-DC converter so if this is 400 DC bus that means this one is connected to 400 volt and that voltage is regulated wind turbine so this turbine we can connect it through for example AC DC if it's active then we can connect it directly to 400 volts or otherwise we can use based on diode rectifier that means AC DC and then we can regulate through DC DC converter and the last one is a battery and this battery is basically connected through DC DC converter so if we define the polarity for example plus minus and we can also define it here and this one the output voltage is connected to this is a power electronic system for a hybrid power system so what's the power electronic system use an AC motor drive so let's look at the block diagram so if this is the AC voltage
so the point is that this voltage is regulated because it's coming from grid 420 and 50 Hertz and if we have AC machine so we need to control the speed to control the speed we may control the frequency and voltage so in this case we need to convert the AC from this supply into another AC with variable frequency and variable voltage so the point is that what sort of power electronic system we need to design and use for this application so we have four types of converters DC 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 AC AC DC and AC AC so think about it for 5-10 minutes and then design the power converter so let's just start with low power AC machine so in this case we may control the speed by changing the input voltage magnitude so if we have AC voltage from grid at that voltage level and 50 Hertz so that means this is the voltage waveform so one possibility is to control the speed is using AC AC converter based on thyristor or SCR so in this case we can control the firing angle and then we can generate this voltage so the point is that by controlling in the firing angle the case is that we can control the output voltage so we can control the RMS and magnitude of output voltage but the point is that frequency is constant still frequency is 50 Hertz so this type of converter this type of motor drive is very simple and cheap but the case is that is not suitable for high power AC drive system so in this case we need to change the topology so for high power converter so if the input voltage is AC grid voltage so higher power converter can be used for high power drive system so one possibility is AC DC converter based on diode rectifier that means the output voltage is unregulated and then if we use a capacitor here then we get DC voltage and then we can connect it to another power converter which is basically DC to AC so here by controlling the converter we can even generate single phase or three phase controlling the frequency and magnitude then we can connect it to different types of AC machine to control the frequency to control the speed so in this case this type of converter basically is designed based on this type of switch that means IGBT with the diode 
this converter operates at high switching frequency while this one operates at aligned frequency so this is the power converter for AC drive system and in this case in most of applications we don't need a filter that means we can directly connect it to either single phase or three phase machine but for some applications especially if there is a long cable which may resonance and create over voltage then we may need to have a filter between the drive and the AC machine